We're gonna explore the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. It is an amazingly powerful piece of literature that seriously improved my life and I believe that it can make yours even better as well. So over the years, I've applied these ideas in myself and in my work with others, helping them lose weight and transform their bodies. And today, I wanna share those insights with you so you can improve your health, weight, and life too. We'll go through each of the seven and apply them to the weight loss journey. Each section builds on the next to create the whole picture. So make sure to watch all the way through the end so that you see how it all fits together to fully empower you and to make those results last. The first and most fundamentally foundational habit of an effective person is to be proactive. Without it, none of the other habits or principles can be achieved. All effective living at its core is an act of proactivity. This means more than just taking initiative with tasks. Being proactive means taking responsibility for your life. A proactive person does not blame their behavior on external factors such as circumstances or people, but owns it as a part of conscious choice based on their values. Proactive individuals focus their efforts on the things that they can change whereas reactive people tend to focus their efforts on the areas of their lives in which they have no control. Truly losing weight requires that you look forward into your life and decide what you want it to look like, and then identify what values you will need to generate the attitudes and behaviors that flow from them naturally. Standard weight loss approaches these days essentially just promote that you externally impose disciplines on yourself for long enough and you'll achieve the goal. But this bludgeoning yourself into change kills the golden goose. If an approach does not consider the internal changes needed, it's destined to fail, since it's where it all starts and lasts. Another issue with externally imposed disciplines and schedules is that they give people the feeling that they are not responsible for the results. If it's not working, then they can too simply just say, oh, the program's no good. You know, when the intentions are not generated and driven from within you, it makes it easy to quit since the blame is on someone or something else. When someone comes up with the approach themselves, they are more committed to it because they know they are the ones to blame if it doesn't work. They take the responsibility for creating it and recreating it when it's not working, rather than just throwing out the whole thing when it's not working. So when leading yourself, it's important to remember that no whole approach or all aspects of any particular program is gonna work for everyone. But certain aspects of every program will work for anyone. So try out other people's plans and decide for yourself what you like and dislike and keep what works, throw out what doesn't, rather than throwing out the whole thing because certain aspects of it didn't work for you. Doing something is always better than nothing. And it becomes something that you build on. Slowly, as you keep doing this, you learn a lot about how the whole game works, and more importantly, what works for you and what doesn't. Be open to new ideas and revisit old ones to see if they might fit at a different time in your life. You must keep adapting and evolving as your life and life circumstances change. This is such a key piece around the discussion of sustaining weight loss that is overlooked and under-discussed. The reason people don't typically keep it up is because life changes and they don't adapt their health habits alongside those changes. It's not because of genetics or hormones or some set point. It's because of being reactive to their health rather than proactive as life moves forward. You are in charge of putting your lifestyle together and maintaining it. You are the expert on you. So who else could know what will work for you better than you? To some extent, all diets work as long as you do them. But realistically, for you to do them, they must be doable for you. This channel is about principles, not practices of effective weight loss. Overly specific practices are just another externally imposed discipline that makes the person not responsible for the outcomes. The program you choose is not going to make you lose weight. 
you are going to make you lose weight. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. In my view, the end to be kept in mind is best not to be your goals. Goals are temporary in nature and motivation evaporates almost immediately once they've been achieved. For lasting success, the end to be kept in mind is the purpose of the action. Motivation comes from reasons, you know, the why for which you do something. Losing weight simply just to lose mass is impotent of the power to drive action. Now, on the other hand, losing weight to become healthier and live longer and to be a, a better parent, uh, to have more energy, self-esteem and fun in life, or whatever the reasons are for you personally, um, are highly motivating forces. Connecting your reasons and the vision of a better you pulls you into that brighter future. You can see how this links up with habit one. If someone is not being proactive about what the purpose of their actions are, then they're not inspired to do them. By being intentional about putting more mind into the process of their actions, they become infinitely more effective. If someone wants to really embody this habit, then they would spend quality time considering deeply the reasons that they want to do the action, how it will improve their lives, all the things they'll be able to do when they do achieve what they want, how they'll feel when they're living in that new reality, and for extra points, since we are motivated towards pleasure, but in reality, even more motivated away from pain, what are they going to miss out on if they don't engage in the action? Once these things are clear in mind, they become planted inside of you. What once seemed painful becomes inspired. Covey says that if you haven't got your priorities in your heart, you have not mastered habit to keep the end in mind. He's saying here that if someone is struggling to find the drive to do what they say they want, the basic problem is that their priorities have not been really deeply planted in their hearts and minds. They haven't really internalized habit to. They're most likely working on the leaves, on the attitudes and the behaviors of discipline without even thinking to examine the roots the basic paradigms from which their natural attitudes and behavior flow. When someone is just trying to hack their habits and force themselves to do behaviors they don't want to do, it is destined for failure. For permanent changes to your lifestyle to stick, they must be aligned with your inner core principles and priorities. Until these are mined and processed to match your higher intentions, the behavior won't stick. This is not to say that you have zero desire to indulge in your old lifestyle of mindless consumption, but your desire for something higher is greater. And the more you cultivate the new lifestyle, the more natural it comes to you to be that way. And the more that you see the fruits of your efforts, the deeper it gets planted into your core. Then the desire for how you used to be will be much more easily ignored. So once you have become proactive, the first area to apply it to is getting clear on your purpose for improving your weight and your health, to become inspired, which prevents burnout, rather than forcing yourself into taking actions that you hate. At the end of a coaching session, I'll ask someone out of 10, how important is this to you? And regardless of the answer, I take the opportunity to highlight how important it is that it is important to you. Because when, not if, but when things get hard or you're not getting the results that you would like as fast as you'd like or whatever it might be, in the back of your mind, you think, oh, well, how much does it really matter anyway? You know, there's no way you will feel motivated to push through. You know, when a craving strikes, you know, it starts to block out of consciousness your reasons for change and it only sees the value of gratifying your senses with that yummy food. It is in that moment, if you proactively keep your consciousness open to the end you wish to realize and the value of that, then the cravings seem much less desirable. Without the end in mind for your weight loss efforts, when hard times and cravings come up, you'll not be very effective. Habit three, put first things first. 
This one has had whole books written on it alone by many other people as well following the release of Covey's work. It's one of the most profound time management models ever created. Covey points out a simple and obvious but profound truth that some things really matter and others just don't. There is a famous quote that says, things that matter least should never be at the mercy of things that matter most. Simply stated, it's making sure that the most amount of time is spent on the most important tasks. So after someone has become proactive and etched out the ends that are important to keep in mind, now it's time to define and prioritize the highest leverage actions to take to achieve those ends and have the conviction to stick to them. Effective people have taken the time to identify the most important priorities in their life and make sure they are done first, meaning they are non-negotiables. They happen no matter what in a prescribed time, whether it be every day or week or month or year, they have the time committed to the activities that matter most and the things that matter second and third and so on can be done with the peace of knowing that the first ones have been done or will get done in the allotted time slot. When you just run around doing whatever is screaming the loudest at you for attention, you carry a subtle sense of guilt that maybe you should be doing something else more important, that something of a higher priority is being ignored. Without really thinking it through and being certain of what your highest priorities are, you couldn't achieve the peace of mind that comes from knowing the most important activities of your life will definitely be attended to. So that is why identifying those well is a crucial first step to being able to put first things first. He maps out the powerful model of the four quadrants of time contrasting the two factors of urgency and importance to help gain clarity on what matters most. Urgency is defined as the thing screaming at you to be done now. And importance refers to if it is contributing to your long-term mission in life. It's not uncommon for people to wait until they can't stomach how fat they've become anymore. And it is urgent to get the weight off because it's so painful to be that way. The problem with doing it like this, obviously, other than spending so much time feeling unhappy with how you look and feel, is that it creates an atmosphere of impatience with the process of weight loss. Feeling the need to get it all off right now and attempting quick fix, unsustainable approaches that rebound into rebelling against themselves and putting on more weight than they had in the first place. If you wait until you're 30 kilos overweight every time to do something about it, then the whole experience is going to be much more sufferable. As we discussed earlier, health and weight loss habits are not something that have a deadline, so they don't inspire urgency. Even after a health scare, initially that may motivate someone, but as soon as they lose a bit of weight and feel a bit better, the motivation kind of wears off and loses any sense of it needs to be done before it's too late. Healthy habits are a long-term investment in your well-being that you have to have a broader perspective on life and your body to appreciate and desire above and beyond the pleasure you experience in the moment of eating. Successful living is simply practicing a few small disciplines consistently. Disciplines such as saying no to things that waste your time. No to people who are using you. Saying yes to moving a little more. Saying no to that donut. <laughs> Creating permanent changes in your lifestyle is no more than introducing appropriate, incremental behavioural changes that you sustain over time. What one small thing could you do regularly starting now that you aren't currently doing that would improve your weight? Right, focus on doing that rather than what your weight is. Right, maybe it could be doing a certain number of steps a day or a week right, or doing one short workout a week. You, know, you can't improve on a habit that you don't have. So just get your foot in the door. Right? Plant the seed in your life 
and you get started so you can start growing it over time. So these first three habits are what make up the section dealing with internal self-mastery, with the private victory. Once you've mastered these, you get yourself out of dependence on needing others and the external world to take care of you. You become independent and capable of managing and evolving yourself functionally. And from there, from true independence, you are now ready to cultivate the next three, addressing interdependence, where you are able to effectively relate to others and the other parts of yourself. Habit number four, think win-win or no deal. Covey stresses the point here that think win-win is not a technique. It's not a game to win with people. It's a way of being in the world. It's a frame of mind and a courageous approach to life that seeks mutual benefit and satisfaction between all parties. He identifies it as a courageous way to live because sometimes it requires resolution and tenacity to make sure that everyone is winning as defined by each individual. It often requires uncomfortable conversations that challenge people to be honest with themselves and with you about what they really want and think through the best way to make sure no one has to walk away unsatisfied in any meaningful way. Now, I know this might sound like a lot of work and it would just be easier to just compromise or to dominate the situation to get an efficient outcome. And in the short term, that might be correct, right? It may well work to get the job done, but it breaks down the relationship in the long term, withdrawing from the emotional bank account, and breaking down trust, uh, respect, and cooperation. If your goal is to get the best long-term results in life, in the end, the only real option is to make sure everyone wins. Otherwise, it's destined for breakdown. So knowing this and being committed to this means that you uncompromisingly make sure everyone wins. And if after thoughtful and empathetic exploration of how to make sure everyone wins, it, it just doesn't seem possible for everyone to win, then you decide not to be a part of it and opt for no deal. The commitment to being consistent with this philosophy is more important than any short-term win you may get from compromising the principle. When people know you devoutly only get involved in situations where everyone wins and don't just do it when it suits you or make allowances because it's convenient, you become an icon of integrity and trust that will serve you in much greater ways in the future. So in a sense, no deal is still a win. This is not lose-lose. As long as the work was done to truly know it just couldn't be made win-win. So when a part of you feels like it's being told to shut up and toe the line, being denied its desires, disrespected and put down, made to feel wrong and bad, right, demonized and hated, you become a very dysfunctional whole. Right? That part of you feels like they're losing and being put in a box and told to stay there. Right? This only lasts so long until that part builds up enough frustration and arcs up and rebels against a part that's trying to lord over them. You don't want to be around yourself when you're condemning and putting yourself down. So you do what you can to psychologically escape. And commonly, that's eating. Right? And the cycle goes around and around. You feel bad, so you eat. And then you feel bad for eating, and that drives you to want to escape, which drives you to eat and repeat. Right? This is a toxic merry-go-round. Instead, you want to honor that part of you that needs to comfort itself and recognize why it feels the need for comfort in the first place and do your best to get that need met in a calorie-free way. Right? Empathize with yourself. Know the needs of the different parts of yourself and make sure they are all met in positive ways and then you'll be aligned and be able to move forward functionally. That is the key to being able to stay in the game and keep up the change in your lifestyle that you're implementing. From this perspective, high quality self-awareness is possibly the most potent weight loss tool needed to succeed. 
If you're not committed to taking the time to make sure all parts of you are on board, you won't trust that you will make sure all aspects of you win. And if a part of you thinks that it will be made to lose all the time, then it won't get motivated to get on board and help your efforts. And worse yet, it'll pop up and sabotage your efforts. Habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. This one is pretty simple, but not easy. It is a principle of effective communication. When communicating with others, most people are not actually listening at all. They're not actually trying to understand the other person that they're communicating with. They're just trying to get the other person to understand them. They're desperately focused on themselves and what they want to say. If the other person speaks, they tolerate it and just wait for their turn to speak. Then they are really just wanting to get their point across and make sure their information and intentions are out there. When acting like this, the speaker is showing no awareness that for words to truly impact the person they're speaking with, they, they must be in the right headspace to receive that. Knowing this, the only way to meaningfully influence anyone is to really understand where they're at, right? connecting with them and communicating from there. Covey points out how a lot of education goes into the skill of talking, but not much goes into the skill of listening. Knowing how to genuinely inquire into the other person's position and listen not just for what words are being said, but for an understanding of what paradigms, concerns, and ideas are present within them. This builds trust and confidence between you that empowers you both. Covey points out that the default behavior of most humans is not to be curious and open, to be moved and engaged by another point of view, but they're just coming to the party with their mind already made up and are just looking to have their view validated. If we come into the weight loss game thinking we already know what to do or what is right and wrong, things like you know, all that's needed is to just to be a bit more strict on the diet or that all we need is to just ignore the scales or just exercise a bit more. And we're just looking to validate our own already held views, then we're doomed to get the same results as last time. If you want new results, you need a new way of thinking and a new approach. One that first understands where the individual is truly at holistically, so that they can effectively address the problem where it is actually gonna make a difference, rather than just ignoring the factors at play and applying blind hope to them. It's all too common that people just jump into a program without understanding where they are first trying to just look for a program to do or apply behaviors they think will or would work without fully understanding their personal realities that interplay with the application of fitness advice. There are parts of you that have established patterns of behavior, habits, values, emotions, routines, cultural norms, and more around food and movement and ignoring all that and just pretending that these personality parts don't exist and don't need to be consulted about how you move forward is just a foolish recipe for failure. Before attempting to jam these new behaviours into your life, make sure you've really listened to those aspects of yourself and understood where you truly are in your relationship to your health behaviours. By really inquiring into yourself and asking some questions like, how ready are you for change? What will actually be involved in the process? How long will it take, realistically? What are you realistically willing to give up or start doing right now or, or ever? What will you gain from making the change? What will you lose if you don't? When you ask these kinds of questions, the part of you that needs to be heard will come to the surface and answer the call. The more of these kinds of questions you can ask, the better. Now that the parts needing to feel heard have been acknowledged and considered before creating a plan or a way forward, they're much more likely to get on board and help the process rather than hinder the process. Ignoring this step is death to healthy progress in your relationship with others or yourself. Habit number six, 
synergize. Cooperating with others allows you to benefit from their skills and knowledge and time right, to create outcomes that are just not possible or not very noteworthy individually. What is hard about working with others who have different traits from you to benefit from is that because they are, by definition, different, a high level of maturity is required to be able to make sure the differences are embraced and synergized rather than being rejected and become divisive. It's easy to run off and operate alone, but it's limited and lonely. It is hard to stick with others and keep opening up and empathizing to reach a synergy, but it is vast and fulfilling. The magic of synergy is found in the quality of connection between the diverse relationships. When this is working well, one draws inspiration and ideas off the other, and then they're inspired by being an inspiration and vice versa, right? feeding off each other, taking turns leading the way in different ways. When people begin relating to each other genuinely, they are open to each other's influence. They begin to gain new insights from each other's perspectives. Their differences open them up to ideas and ways of doing things that they would never have thought of. Without synergy, differences typically just create competitive and comparative and judgmental relationships that are only utilised for exploitation, if at all. But with synergy, relationships are empowered by a healthy dose of respect, humility, empathy and grit, which enables differences to increase their problem-solving capacity and success. They discover solutions and find motivation from this relationship that they could never have found on their own. Different parts of you want different and often opposite things. You know, one wants security and comfort, the other wants variety and excitement. You know, one wants to feel soothed and the other wants to feel challenged. One wants to enjoy the food on the couch and the other wants to feel lighter and stronger. A part of you wants to change and a part of you wants things to stay the same. And if these parts are expected to just operate independently and just jockey for power, then all you'll have is internal conflict and nothing gets done. It only works when they all sit down and work out how to work together so everyone is happy and satisfied. And when they do, they synergize and they find ways to feed each other and align their efforts so all parts grow and evolve rather than certain parts dominating others and feeling put down. This also applies to the help that you might choose to enlist. If you get a coach or a trainer, make sure this relationship is one that synergizes with you. Now, choose someone who will align with and support you and feed inspiration into your journey rather than someone just trying to tell you what to do and not to do. Someone who empowers you to be an independent and interdependent player of the weight loss game. Not someone who's making you dependent on them, their service or products to keep going. Habit number seven, sharpen the saw. This habit grows your ability to perform every other habit and principle. So for that reason, you could say it's actually the most valuable one that needs to be done. Consistently and regularly sharpening the saw is essential for forward momentum in life. Building you is the most important investment that you can make as you are the instrument involved in all the dimensions of your performance. Sharpening the saw is never urgent. So it seems like a distraction from what you're getting done, but when you take a few hours a week to renew you, then every other hour in that week will be more satisfying and effective. Much like the quote from Martin Luther King, yeah, I have so much to do today that I'm gonna to need to spend three hours in prayer in order to be able to get it all done. Yeah, for him, it was prayer that sharpened his saw. It gave him a sharpness and quality to his thinking and energy that powered him through his tasks for the day. This point here tells us that success in one area does not compensate for failure in other areas. For example, success at work does not make up for a failed marriage or failed health. 
It's essential to tend to each area with balance, as to overindulge or overattend in one area means to neglect another. We are a whole system of integrated parts, and if one of the parts are broken, that affects the whole. In a coordinated system, one part has its flow-on effects to the others, and those effects feed back into the system and make it stronger or weaker. So it is vital to keep all parts working in tip-top order to get tip-top results in life. Feeling good doesn't just happen. It comes from living a balanced, connected life where you consciously take the time to renew yourself. It is up to you to do this on purpose. It never happens accidentally. How you choose to renew yourself is up to you, but you must do it. Otherwise, you'll totally burn yourself out. From the knowledge you have now, it's surely clear that weight loss is not simply a physical matter of what you eat and how you move. It's a whole person, many part system that needs to be linked up and synergized if we're able to have any hope of doing a good job and then maintaining it. The positive effect of sharpening the saw in one dimension is that it has a domino effect in all other dimensions since they're all interconnected. This creates an upward spiral of growth that feeds every area of life, especially empowering the areas that you're actively working on. So being on this upward spiral means that you're habitually sharpening and maintaining all aspects of your life, increasing your ability to do more as you move upward and there's more to do. Another point that I would make here is that constant improvement and refinement of your body is actually the best maintenance plan. What I've noticed is that with anyone, including myself, that's kept their results, is the way that they maintain their weight and their new lifestyle is always to be improving. You always be sharpening that physical sore. It doesn't always have to be the same goal, but you're always improving something. Uh, for example, at first the focus is on getting lighter, uh, but then when you've gotten as light as you care to be, uh, you, you may go through a phase of trying to get stronger, and then you might focus on getting fitter, and then on getting more muscle. And then you've probably, at this point, put on maybe some unwanted fat again, so then you go back to focusing on getting lighter, and then well, you might want to start focusing on running for longer or doing a particular sport. And then, you know, whatever it is that your inspiration leads you to do. The, the key here is that constant and never-ending improvement in various ways is the way to stay engaged. Okay, so there you have it. The foundational ideas of the seven habits with their applications to weight loss and permanent body transformation. Thanks for watching all the way through to the end, for those of you who did. I know it was a long one, but I feel like this is my best work yet. I hope you enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought and uh, what you want to see more of. Hit the like if you liked it, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, watch our other content here or here, and uh, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.